Hello guys, hello everyone. Thank you for joining on the Saturday morning. So yeah, let's wait for some two to four minutes and then we can start our session so that uh, everyone else can join. So yeah, let's wait. Yeah, I see people joining. So yeah, let's wait uh, some for some more time, and then we can get started once we see a good amount of audience here.
yeah so hello guys let's get started so first of all i'll like to welcome each and every one of you for uh, being here and uh, so uh, i you guys already are a part of uplift so i don't need to explain you what uplift is and what we are doing just uh, i'll give an introduction of uh, Uh, what our this uh, talk series is about so during this uh, 100 days of uplift we have planned uh, uh, this tech uh, expert talk tech series so that uh, we are we are trying to get uh, a great speakers and industrial experts so that they can give uh, share their experience share their ideas and uh, uh, like uh, whatever they have work and what we need to be in the industry in our future so for all those things uh, we have tried uh, uh, to keep this uh, series session so i hope uh, you will be enjoying uh, this series and today is our first talk by dipti ma'am so i'll just like to give a short intro about her So she is a woman entrepreneur with 8 plus years of work experience in HR training and software development. She currently heads business and HR at Apply.ai. She is also a career guide who runs her own pet project of Career Tete A Tete with Dipti since 2020 and is also a career mentor with Indiewise. She has written various HR articles on NHRD, HR Success Talk, Middle Earth HR, etc. Her interests include posting on LinkedIn, writing quotes on your code, and being a Google Local Guide Level Seven. So she is extremely experienced uh, speaker. We are uh, here. She will be talking on how to give an interview with confidence and. Uh, hopefully you will really going to enjoy her session so dipti ma'am we are going to add you to the stream so you are live now hello ma'am thank you for being with us and yeah you look really good <laughs> with this mustache yeah so i like to hand it over to you and you uh, you can uh, interact and whenever you need any help with interaction with audience please let us know and we'll help you Sure, Over sure. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, meet Mr. Karma. How is everyone doing today? I'm Mr. Karma. I'm your interviewer for the day. Okay. And uh, how we're going to run the show today is uh, we're going to have ten questions, which all of you will have to answer, because you are in a session wherein you have to know how to uh, give an interview confidently. all right so mr karma is going to ask you some questions and then after that like he'll keep appearing in between and then miss deepthi can take over is everyone okay with that if everyone is okay with that can i see some thumbs up some thumbs up in this chat some thumbs up please i see one yes yes thumbs up anything works smile is also work mr karma is a great guy he's a good interviewer Okay so Mr Karma is still trying to fix his mustache so Mr Karma is going to now invite Deepthi and she's going to talk all right <laughs> Okay guys hi hi good morning on a saturday morning uh, the reason i did that is because you may have attended a lot of talks which always start with a quote with some gyan i have also done talks like that so i'm not blaming anyone for that but i thought let me do something different because we have more students in this particular session and it's always great to interact with students uh, you know trying to bring your creative side because i think you guys are less judgmental <laughs> but with that being said um how i'm going to run the show for today is there are no ppts okay absolutely no ppts i need an interactive crowd because the type of questions that i'm going to ask you of course that's that was the fun part or the fun side of me but there's also the serious side which is going to teach you uh, some good lessons that can help you pick up your interview skills can help you overcome your fear of interviewing and everything of that sort all right so <clears throat> let me start with a simple question that all of you may have heard uh, which is introduce yourself uh, can all of you just put it in the chat a short introduction which only would comprise of two sentences two sentence introduction 
So I would want to see in the chat uh, a two sentence introduction from all of you. So if I were to introduce myself, hi everyone, my name is Deepti. I am an HR professional with eight plus years of work experience. That's my short introduction. How about you guys? Two sentences, um, two sentence introduction is what I need from all of you. You won't be judged, don't worry. Even if you think it's funny, it's witty, it's, um, you know, it's something different, please go ahead and introduce yourself. If this is not an interactive session, trust me, you guys will not enjoy it, which is why I said there's no PPT. Um, you aren't attending it to just gain gyan. You're also attending to kind of uh, learn from this process, right? So hi, I'm Smriti. Thanks for having me. I'm Lingesh. Hello, I'm Akshita, and I'm an, an enthusiastic person. Very nice. Uh, can I see some more, please? Because after that, of course, there are learnings, there is gyan, that all will come your way. But now is the time for you to shine. What are the first steps that you are taking to get noticed by the recruiter? Hello, everyone. My name is Sadbir. I'm an aspiring software developer. Very nice. Um, I'm Yati Padia. I'm very excited to hear from you. I am Ayan, Ayan, sorry. And I'm always keen to learn. I am someone random, OK? And I'm a student who has never seen my college thanks to Corona. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Hello, I'm Namrata. Hi. Hi, everybody. So maybe I'll just give like another one minute for everyone to kind of introduce themselves. Uh, right now, the time on my clock that I see on my laptop is 11.14. So probably take another minute for you guys to introduce yourself. I'm Sindhav Dipesh, final year IT engineering student. Hi, Sindhav. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. In fact, whoever is taking the initiative is being proactive to type it out in the chat. I know it takes extra amount of effort, but that extra amount of effort is what will make you stand out in an interview. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Kushal, and I'm a full stack web developer. I'm enthus I am an enthusiast and a problem solver. OK, uh, Shubham, sorry, I missed. Hello, everyone. My name is Shubham Kumar. I did my graduation this year from CSE Stream. Hi, my name is Divya Maheshwari, and I'm a passionate web developer. I'm Sunidhi Bansal, pursuing BTEC from LPU, a student and learner forever. Hello, I'm Dhwani, hoping the colleges start soon. OK, that's a nice one. Hi, I am. Parjanya Aditya Shukla, I am a Flutter developer interested in creative tech stuff. So, okay. so I see a lot of tech people on the platform. I don't know what tech knowledge will you gain from me because I was a software developer like oh, it's been 10 years since I was a software developer and I switched my gears and got into HR. So you'll get all the HR related again. But nice to see that there are tech people on this particular platform. All right. Virtual hug. Okay. Cool. So. Um, uh, how we like since all of you have answered right who you are okay my next question for you not just for those who introduce themselves but also for those um, who didn't introduce themselves how many of you researched about me on LinkedIn I want a yes or no how many of you researched about me on LinkedIn if you have, please be honest to yourself I'm not going to judge you it's not a competition it's not like I am hiring you for something. I just want to know how many of you took the pains to go ahead and research me on LinkedIn. Yes or no? A simple yes or no will suffice. Uh, I'm yet to see that on the chat. So, OK. Oh, yeah, OK. Yes, yes, no, not yet. Yes, yes, no, yes. OK, OK, great, great. Quite a few saying yes and no and yes. OK, I see more no's than yes. OK, great, great, great. All right, so keep the answers coming. And in the meantime, I'll tell you why I asked that question. All right, it's not to draw attention to, uh, towards myself, but to let you know that when you're going to interview with someone, and especially if you know the interviewer, like in this case, you knew who's going to come and give the talk, you should always take the time to research that person. All right, especially as a fresher. Right, because um, the interviewer will appreciate that you took out the time to understand his or her way of thinking, which means maybe you would have seen, uh, you know, probably 
uh, a few recent posts the person would have posted and you you might start understanding what that person relates to okay which will help you understand your interviewer better it doesn't mean that you go ahead and you say hey hi i have researched you on linkedin this is what i like about you this is what i don't like this is what i don't like no nothing of that sort you can just say uh, hello ma'am or hello sir i have researched about you on linkedin and some of the things that i personally feel i can relate to are you know a b c three points that's it okay me did 10 minutes ago i like this answer okay so <laughs> a couple of good answers so also sent a connection request yes yes all your connection requests would be accepted don't worry about that i am not one of those people who will say uh, you have less number of followers you have more number of followers i'll accept all your connection requests all right so uh, first tip for you guys is if you know who the interviewer is and if you have the means to research about the interviewer given the fact that we live in such a fast paced digitally connected world i think you should take the pains to go ahead and research about your interviewer because that will help you understand how the interviewer thinks what are some of the things on which both of you can relate what are some of the things on both of you might not really agree so those are points wherein you can draw a line and you can say okay these are probably controversial topics wherein i don't agree with the author or with my interviewer so probably i should not bring it up all right so that's first lesson for you uh the next question is um, going to be asked by mr karma uh, mr karma will you be back uh yes ms dipti okay i'm sorry i'm still adjusting my mustache so the third question for you guys uh, after ms dipti has asked her questions is uh, what are some of the common myths that you may have heard about interviews okay if uh, you didn't get the question again i will repeat it for you what are some of the common myths that you may have heard about interviews from your about interviews in general from your friends or from your colleagues or from your classmates or your parents or relatives whoever can you please answer what are some of the common myths so yeah waiting for fastest fingers first uh waiting for you guys to answer what are some of the common myths that you may have heard about interviews in general as mr karma stated so not responding on time okay okay that's a good one nervous okay okay so i'm talking about myths okay not reality some myths that you feel that you have heard enough about interviewers uh, about sorry interviews but you know they may i mean you're confused whether they are true or they are not true asking tricky questions easy questions are asked in a very tricky manner interviews are hard to crack that's a good one interviews are hard to crack you have to always answer everything in english good one good one don't be very honest about your weakness very nice dress perfect to impress okay okay so probably i'll take another minute it's 11:20 on my clock so sorry 11:21 now on my clock 11:22 is uh, the time till when you can answer these questions and then i'm going to give you my side of uh, uh you know information about these myths interview depends on mood of interviewer very nice asking random questions about our personal life good one good one need not to talk about experience as it's already in resume okay okay so probably another 30 seconds for you guys to keep asking these questions and then i'll address them one by one and i'll tell you whether they are really myths or they are not really myths all right interviewers don't talk to us if we say i have mastered in python really okay this is a question which i may not be able to address like i said i i am not really a tech person but this is the first of its kind so i may have to research about this kajal interviewers are very professional and you can't answer anything in funny way good 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 questions keep them coming all right so another 10 seconds and then we'll switch gears and i will start answering all your questions that you have put in here any last uh, one two questions that i can see coming cool so you can bring them on and in the meantime i'll start answering uh, whether the thing that you put in is a myth or not okay so not responding on time is not really a myth yes you're right 
um because it happens and you may argue that it happens from the recruiter side recruiters might argue it happens from the candidate side but not responding on time or honestly for that matter ghosting each other during the interview process is not a myth anymore uh it wasn't really earlier as well but it's not even a myth right now all right uh it's actually true people tend tend to take time to respond back they sometimes might not respond to you and there are different reasons as to why that happens okay i would like to stress on the reasons so that you understand the reasons better one part of it is uh, you may be one of the 100 candidates that someone would be uh, interviewing or probably evaluating so if you were uh, always think of yourself by putting yourself in the recruiter's shoes okay i'm not saying i'm not debating the good hr bad hr piece here or good recruiter bad recruiter piece here and just saying just put yourself um in a recruiter shoes and think or else forget forget that think about yourself as someone who's using like 200 apps on your uh mobile who has 200 apps okay every single day every app will send you a notification saying why don't you review us on google play or why don't you re review us on app store wherever all right google play store sorry will you take a look at all the 200 um notifications in a day at max you can address say three or four of them okay apart from that your mind just wanders or it will just die down the battery will drain because there is just too much information overload for you on your mobile screen right the same happens with the recruiters as well so if you have interviewed and you want immediate answers right like within a day like why are you not answering to me why are you not really reaching out to me the recruiter may or may not have the time to do that because there are tons of other roles for which he or she would be hiring right and there would have been tons of other candidates who would have been interviewed for interviewed for that role as well who would be following up with the recruiter so which is why not responding of on time happens on the recruiter's part however it also happens on the candidate's part because the candidate might be sitting for more than one interview process right with different organizations either on campus or on off campus so there is no um, you can't really play a blame game here but you have to understand it's not really a myth and there might be different ways in which you can tackle those okay we'll talk about those later being nervous in interviews is absolutely not a myth yes you can be nervous in interviews i myself have been nervous in interviews i've lost a lot of um, good companies probably by being nervous in interviews i'll talk about those towards the very end of the session okay mm -hmm. easy questions are asked in a very tricky manner yes yes uh this is again not a myth easy questions are more or less sometimes asked in a very tricky manner because they want to see how complex can you think or how uh what can you interpret how simply can you interpret out of the complex question that has been asked to you okay it kind of helps uh, them understand what is the level of critical thinking the problem solving skills that are there in you okay interviews are hard to crack is an absolute myth okay interviews are not hard to crack okay i will not say they are easy to crack as well but they are definitely not hard to crack it is just uh sometimes it's a combination of you know if you have the right skills at that point of time if uh, you know uh, you are a culture fit for the organization at that point of time right so interview cracking in itself is not um a difficult process however you may not get you not getting selected for the process might be a different ball game altogether and we will see at why there are chances you might not get selected for a certain role you have to always answer everything in english uh i mean i have a difference of opinion here like it can be a myth it can't be a myth it just depends on whom you are talking to some and it's not really organization specific all right there might be some organizations in which you still have folks who would like to speak in regional languages especially if they connect with you at a more deeper deeper level and might start you guys might start chatting in hindi or any other regional language that you speak in so it is part myth part reality okay don't be very honest about your weakness yes uh, this is not really a myth yes you shouldn't be very very honest about your weakness i will i again have mr karma has a question on that so we will know how to tackle with these and uh, dress perfect to impress yes that's not a myth you should 
dress perfect to impress all right so if you're not dressing perfect to impress uh, the other person might feel you're not really interested in yourself right so dress perfect to impress is to first impress yourself uh, and after that comes the recruiter interview depends on the mood of the interviewer yes sadly this is not a myth okay it does depend on the mood of the interviewer but it also depends on how um, the interviewer is able to manage his or her emotions so the in interviewer is not able to manage his or in her emotions well um yes you will be in for a shock and probably will not clear the interview process asking random questions about our personal life okay so again this is not a myth but there are some reasons why random questions are asked about your personal life uh, some recruiters try and gauge what is your background uh, very sad i mean some of them are really really sad to know like some people gauge the financial background and accordingly they decide whether they want to give you the offer or not or another reason this is one one set of recruiters another set set of recruiters might be asking because they really want to see what kind of culture you come from and whether those values can be imbibed uh those values kind of match the values of the organization right so they are never random questions okay random questions is a myth but personal life questions are asked because there is something that is being determined while asking you the questions about your personal life okay need not talk about experience as it's already in resume you can you i mean ideally in the end people will ask you questions about your experience right so you don't have to specifically talk about that but if someone asks you of course you, you will reply about that and kajal like i said interviewers don't talk to us if i if we say i have mastered in python i absolutely don't have an idea about that i will have to research please feel free to send me uh, a linkedin invite so that i can answer you on that um interviewers are very professional and you can't answer anything in a funny way myth okay part myth part reality some interviewers are very professional which is why you have to research about them if they are someone who are like no nonsense people they actually don't accept funny answers they want you to stick to the point and if you go ahead and you try to you know uh showcase your sarcasm skills showcase your humor skills it might not really go down and it might actually backfire but there are some people who actually value humor over everything else so if for them you are trying to be like really really serious um, again might backfire get ready with your introduction before your interview yes you should be ideally ready with your interview interview is dependent on skills um this is again part myth part reality sadly even in today's times it uh, and given the fact that i work with an organization wherein we deal with clients who who usually ask us does the fresher ha have you know have any experience in terms of an internship done in the area in which we are trying to hire him or her okay so it's of course skills but part of it is also experience sad sad but the truth it's around is service based and product based companies are not the same i don't really think that's the case it's uh, more or less the same but um, again what is being determined is the culture fit and again it differs from recruiters to recruiters and companies to companies be honest with your interviewer else you may be stuck at some point a uh, good controversial question right so you should be honest with your interviewer but not to the extent that uh, you go ahead and you destroy your mental peace over whatever honesty that you have just exhibited okay so you have to be honest uh, but it doesn't mean you keep on doling out um, what do you call it? experiences about your life which are not really needed for the interviewer to know what do you do if a recruiter is not responding after an interview how to handle it? yes very good question i'm going to come back to this okay in fact i was reading an article i have that present i'm going to read it out to you from there and also share the link of the article so that you guys can also take a look i have sent you a connection request cool all right so i hope i answered all the questions uh, that mr karma had put in front of you okay moving on to the next question uh, because like i said i wanted to be more question answers uh, specific i don't i would like to do this session wherein i don't reserve the question and answers towards the very end so you can keep asking me questions in between and i will also keep asking questions and wherever we talk in between you will hear some pearls of wisdom if you may call those right so mr karma is going to be back with another question mr karma oh uh, yes miss thank you thank you miss dipti 
so my next question is what's your biggest fear during interviews sorry my mustache again going out of way what is your biggest fear during interviews can i get some answers please so who wants to answer uh, mr karma you get like 2 minutes what what's your biggest fear during interviews i mean i just gave like 10 minutes of gyan like you guys can start responding confidence and nervousness okay getting nervous and th then not being able to talk okay okay Parjanya and Shivangi have replied. Anyone else who is uh, putting in the thoughts? I will start stuttering. Okay, that's my fear. Reading the interviewer's mind, confidence and nervousness. I might stammer while answering. Okay, okay. Fear of rejection. Very nice. Uttering wrong English in front of them in nervousness. Okay, okay. uh sorry i just have to go a little up to heat sometimes i get stuck while speaking and I'm in, and i need to take time unable to answer properly if i will be able to answer or not also panic mode ruins me nervousness i'm not a good speaker and i shiver while i'm nervous uh unable to answer something i know but fail to express at the moment to be too open to interviewer might start jabbering my english confidence and nervousness not able to present myself properly fake off selection and nervousness okay i really didn't understand this point if you can just type in once more um snehal uh using words like um uh, i do it too okay fillers uh, akshay time on uh, i i'm with you on this nervousness ah okay <laughs> um ah ah get stuck in some problems speaking a lot because of nervousness and speaking fast wow good one okay so let me uh, kind of categorize them into bigger buckets okay so most of you talked about being nervous uh, under that comes you know you might actually stammer stutter uh, speak wrong english you might get stuck you might start using fillers like ah uh, um, uh, or you might start speaking fast right so nervousness is one big category uh okay parjanya shared in my very first interview last year for internship i was shivering during the interview okay shivering again i'll count under nervousness lack of knowledge yes lack of knowledge is another um, big uh, category that we can think of right um, uh, lack of knowledge may we can also include unable to answer something i know but fail to express at the moment i mean of course it's not really the same but uh, i mean something pertaining to knowledge so one can be either lack of knowledge or other can be you know something but you are not able to express it at the moment hesitation again fear of rejection yes so these things i will count under um fear of expressing yourself which is fear of rejection and hesitation all right so um couple of things right what if i don't know the answer to any of the questions okay so couple of things that you can do to overcome these right uh first part of it is of course uh like i said the first step starts with researching about your interviewer especially if you know about him or her second thing is knowing about the organization okay what is that organization stands for so when someone tells you why don't you go and check out our website what do you think they really mean they don't mean for you to go and see how beautiful their website looks or how many awards have they won and all that what they mean for you to see is what are some of the common themes that they uh you know they are exhibiting right or what are the values that they follow what are the vision what is the vision of the organization right when we, when someone tells you read the value uh, statement or read the list of values that are provided by an organization why do they ask you to do that because they want you to go and do some deep introspection and see if you align with those values or not right so if if a company has a value which is known as ownership and you are not really someone who wants to be an owner at this point of time you want someone to lead you hand hold you and over a period of time you might become an owner will that company be the right fit for you maybe not right because you yourself don't have the ownership skills at the moment and i'm not saying it's the right or wrong i'm just saying you don't possess those skills at the moment and probably you may not 
you know fit the bill which is why someone might tell you, you are a cultural you're not really a cultural fit that's what they mean by it right uh, if i were to so i am an hr who has worked across it organizations insurance industry analytics industry consulting industry right if i were to apply for a manufacturing industry right their basic a uh, value system would be someone who can take care of unionized uh, team members right or unions for that matter i am not adept at that right if i'll apply for that in all likelihood i will get rejected because one i do not have the experience second i may not have the values that are to be exhibited in a manufacturing industry versus something which is exhibited in a more uh, sophisticated industry such as it right so which means you have to understand the value system you have to know more about the organization so first part is done you are you have researched about the interview a second part is done wherein you have researched about the organization coming to the third part is where you look at your resume and see whatever job description they have given do you really really want to do that and is there uh, is at least 70% of what is mentioned in the job description matching with what you have done on your resume okay the reason why you may get nervous you may stutter you may stammer is because you have not self analyzed enough that can be one of the reasons i am not saying that's the only reason right that can be one of the reasons that you have not self analyzed too deeply or you are giving just too many interviews so you don't know in which interview you are going to talk what right which is why you have to take good 15 20 minutes before the interview to kind of sit revisit everything see their website for one last time see your resume for one last time see the values that you relate with the organization see the interviewer that you want to interview with and that is when you get in the process always drink water okay very very cliched advice but always drink water before you get into such interviews okay um i have done a certification from this uh, lovely organization called iron lady and the first thing that they used to teach us is stand in front of a mirror and say something right so for you guys it can be yes i can rock this interview just saying that like five maybe not five five minutes before you should actually be in the interview and you know check if your internet and everything is working fine but at least 10 minutes before the interview you should stand in front of the mirror and say yes i'm going to rock the interview right it gives you the confidence it doesn't determine the outcome please understand the difference you may still get rejected after giving a great interview and there can be multiple reasons why you can get rejected it's all right to get rejected right there is nothing wrong maybe you didn't fit the bill maybe you are not the right fit at the moment why do you want to get into something where you know you might not be able to shine or excel at this point of time right i'm getting a lot of chats uh, at the site so i'm going to go ahead and address those so fear of rejection one thing i would say is something that you will have to overcome you are going to get rejected in life it doesn't have to be in an, in an interview it can be in a relationship it can be another university that you're trying to apply to it can be another job that you're trying to apply to it can be another country that you want to visit right it's okay to get rejected don't self reject don't say i'm not going to do it great at all right you have to say i'm going to give it my best come what may i am not you know i'm i actually do not worry about the results right you have to give the interview as if it's a conversation between two people you have to enjoy it until unless you don't really enjoy you know doing an interview with someone right how will you enjoy the actual work when it's given to you right so always look at interviews as something that you would want to enjoy first right so couple of things that i'm going to read back here uh, lack of uh, sorry okay vishal has asked parjania how was the interview so probably you both can talk uh, okay parjania has written uh, okay okay rejected okay okay all right so vishal has a lot of questions i think parjania and vishal you should either connect on linkedin or offline to kind of you know compare notes um asking questions is always good vishal yes very nicely said girl script foundation uh startup for app dev and some questions okay pajania has answered to it again okay so it was a conversation between pajania and uh vishal anyone who is not reading the chat you can go ahead and read that maybe you'll learn something out of it 
All right. So back to the set of questions again, because my monologue is over. Um, is Mr. Karma is going to back come back with his next question? All right. Oh, hello, lovely people. I'm sorry. I'm having a tough time adjusting this mustache. Uh, so my next question is, what's the question that you think if you got in the interview, you will definitely make a mess out of it? Did you understand it? I will repeat it again for you. What's that one question that you think if you got in the interview, you will definitely make a mess out of it? Thank you, Mr. Karma. Thank you for the question. So for those of you uh, who still didn't understand the question, what's that one question that you think uh, if it comes your way, you're going to definitely mess it up. All right. You know that you're going to like mess it up. And if you're putting tech questions in there, like I said, please reach out to me on LinkedIn because I may not have tech answers at the moment. What are your salary expectations? Bravo. <laughs> That's a good question, Vikram. Tell me more about yourself, Shivangi. Whoa, nice one. Where can you see yourself after five years? Oh my God. I mean, these questions are still asked, is it? Okay. My weakness, very nice. Uh, five years, salary expectations. Tell me something about yourself, weakness. What about your hobby? I don't have any one hobby and I can't answer to it thinking of any. Okay. Some situation-based questions asked in HR. Good one. Tell me something about yourself. Why do you want to join our company? <laughs> That's a very good one. Tell me something which is not on your resume. Yes. Tell me more about yourself. I fear I'll be too open and start messing things up. Okay. 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 All right. So maybe another one minute, 11.44 on my clock. So another one minute. What's your strength? Mm-hmm. So someone is scared about expressing weakness. Someone is scared about expressing strengths. OK. OK. Uh, one last minute. What are your weakness? Oh, sorry. Um, why should we hire you? Where do you see yourself after five years? Why should we hire you? What are your weakness? Uh, and then they will ask, how will you make sure that your weakness does not have an impact on your work? We cannot take you forward as you are not creative or self-motivated. How can you say you have these skills? Why should we select you? Sell me this pen. Oh, my God. What's your weakness? What's the best quality that we hire you? Why do you want to join? You have two minutes to impress us. OK, 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 cool. Good question. So 11.45, uh, you can still uh, keep asking questions. So why are you better than the other candidates? OK, so let us also, again, categorize these questions depending on whoever, like the majority questions that have come our way, right? So one is, uh, where do you see yourself uh, five years from now? OK, now, <clears throat> to be very honest, um, I mean, I am someone who probably might not answer it myself or might not ask someone this myself because five years is too long a time to judge. OK, but basically the reason why these five year questions are asked is to understand if you have carefully thought about your own career. Right. Um, honestly, as youngsters and I have been in that boat. Right. I can say I was a very confused young youngster. I didn't know what I would be doing five years down the line. Right. So most of my answers were, you know, I would like to see myself as a manager in your company and all that. OK, which when I look back now, I find that those uh, answers were hilarious. OK, I don't believe them at all. Uh, I don't believe in them at all. Right. Because in five years, your career can change like this. Right. Today, you may want to be like a tech person. Tomorrow you will say, you know, enough tech. I want to be a spiritual yoga teacher now. Right. So five years down the line, no one can predict. But the reason that People ask you this is because they want to know if you have carefully thought about what you're going to do in terms of your career, right? And the best way to answer it, even if five years down the line, the life, you know, your life doesn't look like that, is to put, you know, to logically think about it, okay? Which means if you're being, say, hired as an, I will talk more in terms of uh, the previous consulting organization that I've worked with. So if you're joining as an associate analyst, maybe two years later, you become an analyst. And again, three years later, you become a consultant, right? So you can say, I would be a consultant by the end of five years. And you can also give a little bit of touch uh, with respect to your personal life as well. So you can say, um, I would have probably visited a couple of countries or anything of that sort, right? Or I would be staying with my, um, I 
I mean, not really talk about like marriage and stuff, but uh, something which you think might be a personal milestone for you. I would have bought a house by then or something of that sort, right? So one small bit, just one thing, right? Even if you're not giving a personal touch, just the professional touch is enough. But as long as you've analyzed about it, right? So there is no good way to answer it, right? But at the same time, there is no bad way to answer it as well. Right. The only thing is you have to believe in what you are answering. So if five years down the line, you feel that you will be someone who is a freelancer, you have to be open about it. And you have to say that I think I will be a freelancer. I'm going to uh, gain all my knowledge and everything from here. And probably I may or may not. It depends. And uh, if my stint in the organization goes really well, I may end up being an intrapreneur for the organization itself. Right. So which is why I'm saying there's no right or wrong answer. I always believe in an honest answer. So it may backfire. It may not backfire. But unfortunately, these are questions which are very recruiter specific. Right. So uh, if you're answering something to someone, just ensure that you have revised about it, like looked at it thoroughly two, three times. Right? Because that's the same answer which probably you'll keep repeating for the other organizations as well. And it might not work with 10 organizations, but the 11th organization might actually feel that you have logically given it a thought. Right. Um, second uh, question that I would like to talk about is uh, strengths and weaknesses. Okay, So Mr. Karma had a question on strengths and weaknesses, but I'm going to go ahead and snatch away that question from Mr. Karma and I'm going to answer it myself. Okay. Uh, so essentially, when you talk about your weakness, don't talk about something that might hurt your chances of getting into the organization. OK, very, very sad corporate truth or whatever you may call it. But you have to talk about weaknesses on which you can work and which may or may not. I mean, which uh, ideally should not interfere with your day to day work. OK, for example, if I were to say my weakness is using a lot of fillers while I'm talking. It's actually a weakness, right? Because I unintentionally am using a lot of fillers. But is it interfering with my day-to-day -day work? Maybe not, right? The other way, you can also say that uh, my weakness is uh, probably I keep checking my mobile phone a lot, right? So you can say that I, put, I have now installed an app which controls my screen time so that I don't look at my mobile phone. So when you're talking about weakness, you always have to talk about what are you doing to combat that weakness. And that weakness should never, ever, ever be very, very personal or directly associated with your job. So if you say my weakness is I get depressed very easily, right, which can be actually true for you, you cannot really talk about it. Sadly, you can't because the judgment that will come from the other side is if you're that depressed, how will you do my work? Right. Which is why these personal things are to be discussed with your mentors, with your friends, with your family, with the ones who love you, which is why uh, uh, sorry, personal weaknesses should not be out. And professional weaknesses should never be in line with the direct work that you're supposed to do. So if your work is something which is uh, very, very multitasking oriented. Like, uh, for instance, when I was working with, a, I was working in consulting, it was a very, very fast paced life wherein we had to do multiple things. If I were to say multitasking is my weakness, it will directly go against me. Right? I'm not saying multitasking is my weakness. I'm just saying if, if that were my weakness, that would have gone against me, which is why weakness, weakness should be like, this I am turned off by light theme of the software to code. I prefer dark theme. Yes, that works. <laughs> That's a good one. Salary kitni loge is a, a very, um, I mean, <laughs> it's a question to which I think I would be a very, very wrong person to answer because I have been a very, very bad negotiator in terms of uh, salary expectations myself as a candidate. But I always think you should research about what the other organizations in similar industry are offering at your level. And you should go ahead and quote that price without any big fear. And you can always say that I searched about it from Glassdoor or I searched about it from LinkedIn or I searched it about it from any other uh, websites that you are aware of. And, you know, through your friends or whoever that you've spoken to, 
and you have to say this is what is the salary expectation that i have given the fact that you operate in the same industry in the uh, you know this is what uh, my friends have told me right tell me more about yourself and tell me something which is not there on your resume are more or less similar questions okay the reason being they want to know something about you uh, which is you as a person which might not really be uh, related to the work that you did earlier right so you might be doing a you might be building a website of your own on the side okay or you might be a toastmasters person uh, speaking at uh, you know interested in public speaking or you might be someone like i am a google uh, local guide level 7 right that's something that's not there on my resume but i like to talk about it because i feel i'm building awareness about Uh, so i stay at bangalore so i'm building awareness about bangalore as a city uh, through my reviews right and i'm passionate passionate about it i'm going to give some amount of my time to that right so which is why when you're talking about something which is not there on your resume again like i said don't get too personal right don't talk about if you've had any breakups in the past or if you're not on talking terms with anyone not nothing of that sort right but you can always talk about certain other good things that you are doing right and if there are any constraints like there is someone in your family who's not well right and you really want to bring it up in the interview saying that i actually am the only sole caregiver for that person go ahead and do that that might actually work in your favor right because someone will see you are you actually want this job because you need the money and you will actually do a great job and you will put that money to good use which is taking care of someone who is not uh, well in your family right so these type of stories are okay but then apart from that try and stick to professional stories okay a uh, hobby again um i know it's difficult to kind of uh, prioritize one hobby even i have like multiple hobbies but you can say um uh, i have these top 3 hobbies and these are these these is and you can always say why are these your favorite hobbies amongst the other hobbies that you have okay a uh, situation based question uh, question again this is very very uh, situation based so depending on uh, whatever your answers are they are trying to see how do you approach a situation right how logically do you think what are some of the underlying things if you can read when a situation is given to you uh tell me more about yourself like i said tell me more about yourself tell me something not on your resume uh, all these are related questions and like i answered this is how you should stick to it what are your strengths like weaknesses i have answered the same way strengths should be something which will directly impact your job okay so if the job is um, tech related okay and you are actually someone who's all on almost all uh, platforms related to the uh, particular tool or uh, language that you are trying to uh, build your expertise on and you are actually coding and winning different laurels i think that should be one of your strengths that you are great at coding okay that is a tech answer but if otherwise i were to ask if the role demands you to take up leadership position okay you can always say that leadership is your strength and you can demonstrate you should always be able to demonstrate it with tangible um examples like for instance uh, you are leading committees or we say you are doing ngo work wherein you are leading a group of 1000 volunteers right that is where you showcase your leadership skills it doesn't necessarily have to be related to your college only okay uh, why should we hire you okay why should we hire you uh, why you and not the other candidates uh, or similar questions right um tell uh, sorry just one second i think i saw what is your best quality right uh so essentially i mean this is how i have done in the past and like like i said it's a very very um personal uh, personalized uh, thought process right so when i i was asked that why you and why not the other candidate i always used to say that you can always choose the other candidate as well but these are certain skills that i bring to the table and if you feel that these skills are right now what are needed at the moment for this particular job in your organization then i would be the right person to be hired okay so honestly i have never put someone else down at the expense of raising myself up 
some people might take that approach as well it's totally fine there's nothing again nothing right or wrong in that but i for a matter have never done that and i know i've been rejected in a couple of places as well right because of the answers that i gave so however that's my value system that is why i've stuck to that and i have always answered it saying that you can always choose the other person but this is what i bring to the table and i think it's in alignment with what you want at the moment so i think you can you know i would be a right fit for this particular role at the moment so which is why um like i said some places i've gotten rejected some places i've gotten selected as well but that's the answer that i have chosen to stick to so similarly you will also have to find out so when someone asks you that why should we hire you they are looking for realistic examples or skills that you can portray for which you can be hired if i want i can tell stories as well you know i'm a great orator i you know i like love speaking with students or i love speaking with people i love sharing my thoughts this is all just english right everybody does that it's it's as similar to it's um it's as similar as putting on your resume that i'm a sincere and hard working professional i mean is the other person not of course the other person is also it is such a cliched line that it doesn't make any sense to be there on your resume right everybody is a self motivated hard working uh, sincere professional who is honing his or her leadership skills everybody is that but what how are you tangibly explaining it right so why should we hire you if the job description says you need to have excellent communication skills do you have something to back it up have you been certified through somewhere which says you are great at communication skills or have you done any internships which can you know which required you to have a lot of good communications because of which you got some tangible results that you can talk about right that's how you're going to answer this question is why should we select you okay or what's your best quality for which we can hire you okay um you have 2 minutes to impress us again same way you have to know the job description company everything very very well to come up with uh you know to be present at the moment and answer it in a way um that you feel you've done a great job at it okay in the end at the end of the interview guys it is you who should feel satisfied that i gave a great interview and you should leave the outcome to wherever it has to go you can't really control that okay why do you want to join us again like i said read about the company see the value system if your values align with the company's values talk about those give tangible examples right saying you say ownership i have taken ownership in leading a team of 1000 volunteers right i think i bring that to to the table because i align with your company's values i align with your company's vision of becoming the top one of the top 10 edtech companies of india because i'm very passionate about edtech i run my side projects i coach students whatever right so you have to be very clear in your mind that why are you joining the organization uh what's the difference between behavioral round and hr round a uh, good question uh, sadbir so behavioral round i mean in some cases there is just one hr round wherein your behavior your culture fitment as well as salary expectations and all those uh, things which are needed are assessed together in some cases it, they might be different you might be doing a psychometric test or probably you might be asked behavioral uh, related situation quests uh, situation based questions right the reason being they are again trying to see if you are giving the answers that will align with the values that they uh, have like for instance if a company is main value is integrity right and someone asks you you are in a situation wherein the client is ready to bribe you right and but you will get a contract which is worth say 1 crore and you are in a very bad situation will you say will you give that bribe of say whatever 50 uh, you know probably 20 lakhs or so right are you okay to give that bribe and are you okay to back that project of 1 crore right if you genuinely feel yes sell me this pen is not answered i <laughs> i am still amazed that question is being asked but i i will come back to that so if you genuinely feel you know from the core of your heart that yeah why not i mean i can if i'm giving the bribe and in the end the you know the 
what do you call it the contract is coming to me and it will actually help improve the condition of my organization i should go ahead and say yes because that is what you believe in it's fine but that's what not what the company believes in the company believes that you you should not go it go ahead that way you should escalate it to someone else there can be work arounds of course not say a no to the client but there can be a work around and if the client is too insistent let the client go right that's what if the company feels integrity is about and if you are you will be posed similar questions and if you really don't believe in that and you are answering it just for, for the sake of it the recruiter will know that you have answered just for the sake of it okay saying you can always choose other person doesn't showcase an egoistic or more sarcastic nature of ours no not necessarily it depends on how you are saying it right so see in the end of course the recruiter has the choice to choose any other person right it's not like the recruiter is emotionally attached to you so what you can do if you're not comfortable putting it that way you can always say this is what i bring to the table and not even talk about who others are there in the in the entire equation right so you can always start your sentence by saying i bring this 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 to the table that's it end it there don't even bring the concept of others in the picture so that's another way you can answer that uh so we should go with the company vision or what we feel if what you feel is not in alignment with the company vision i would say don't go for such a company because in the end you will not, never like a company like that which uh especially like for instance i keep reading a lot on linkedin when people say for some at tech organizations or whatever that you know we made to do lot of sales and it's only sales we i mean i don't really understand everything is very target based and all that right they would have accepted the offer because of the lucrative money that was offered to them but are they really happy in the jobs no because they themselves are not able to get their value system aligned with the company's vision sell me this pen <laughs> <laughs> Vikram ji I am not really a sales person I, I am someone who has started understanding sales at a very very later stage of my life so sell me this pen is a uh, very very cliched question some of the good answers that i've heard um from my uh, sorry from my classmates that was way back in like 10 years ago or so right so they used to always describe um some of them gave fantasy related answers okay so this pen is something else and explained the characteristics of uh, that something else and then sold the pen as a by product some of them specifically concentrated on what the pen could do for them and then tried and sell the pen to them in that way like seeing the product for what it is some people spun stories around it and sold the story instead of selling the pen so there are different ways to answer this question i think google would have much better answers than what i can give you because i am really really not a sales person i have never asked this question to any of my candidates as well uh our knowledge is related to our confidence yes of course so if you have knowledge of a subject of course the confidence will come on its own right so if you see me whenever if i were to answer a tech question you will see me fumbling and i will the first thing i'll say is i don't have the knowledge in that right because if i go ahead and i'll say uh to tomorrow i mean right now if you ask me anything pertaining to data science i have zero knowledge about it right but if i'll say no no i know about it i'll google it up and i'll try answering from there i'll not feel confident about it because i don't know about it and i don't feel shy accepting i don't know about it because my expertise is in hr right even in hr there are certain concepts that i don't know about it so how i try and build up on my knowledge is read more about it that's it so you cannot use any pen on the table to write my name in rejected list or selected list answer to sell this pen question okay 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 oh this is what the answer you gave you cannot use any pen okay you cannot use any pen on the table to write my name in rejected list or selected list wow then <laughs> that's uh, witty cool all right so um are you guys up for like another 10 15 minutes or uh, do you guys want to wrap up i'm really sorry i don't know how long will the session go but uh one i want an answer from the team 
the girl script team and others i also want answers from the audience if you're going to go ahead uh with further questions there are like another two three questions okay cool uh girl script foundation says yes do i see yes from the others or are you already tired okay okay all right so should i call back mr karma mr karma is going to be back okay <clears throat> Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Dipte. Uh, mustache, you see, oh my God, problem since the very start. Okay, so Mr. Karma is here to ask you, what's the one question that you will ask the recruiter? Okay, what's the one question that you will ask the recruiter? Thank you, Mr. Karma. So Mr. Karma is asking, what's the one question that you will ask the recruiter? So uh, if you've seen and if you've given interviews, Karma returns. That's a nice one, Sadhbir. So if you've seen um, in interviews, the recruiter will ask towards the end of the interview, do you have any questions for me? So what is that one question that you think you will answer the recruiter? Uh, we again have two minutes. It's 12.08 by my clock. 12.10 is when we'll stop with the questions. How do you manage to pass the interview of the organization? <laughs> this, I mean, you'll have to frame it a little better. Aksta, otherwise, <laughs> this might actually backfire. How do you manage to pass the interview of the organization? The best part of the session is Mr. Karma. Thank you so much, Sneal. I will convey your um, compliment to Mr. Karma. Smriti, how do you manage your professional and personal life? Good one. Uh, Shivangi says, what has kept you motivated to keep working for so long in the company? Uh, Shivangi, I have a rhetorical question for that. What if the person has joined just like a month ago? Right? So <laughs> if you have researched the interviewer and you know the interviewer has worked for quite some time, then of course, this question makes a lot of sense. What is the work culture at your organization or company? Aap salary kitni doge? <laughs> Good one. Iske baad salary nahi milegi. <laughs> How long has the position been open? Oh my God. These are like such in the face questions. I really, really like the honesty, but uh, I don't know if this uh, question um, will get you the desired answer that you're looking for, Vikram. All right. We have one more question, uh, sorry, one more minute before I wrap up on the questions. Is there anything in my resume that concerns you? Okay, okay. I would want it to reframe a little bit, Krishna, so I'll come back to that. It's a good question, but I will want to reframe it a little bit. How much will be the workload in a day or time I have to give to the company? <laughs> oh my God, you guys are amazing. Where do you see yourself after five years? <laughs> I think Akshita wants to be in the hot seat of the recruiter and ask all these questions. <laughs> I really like, I mean, the amount of, um, what do you call it, openness that your guys are bringing to this particular chat. I really, really appreciate it. Some of it, I'm sure, will not go down well with recruiters at all. <laughs> so I really, really appreciate that. Uh, one, I think another 10, 15 seconds. Uh, if anyone else has any questions to ask, I'm not too sure how many people are there on this chat, but I encourage you to have a more, uh, you know, open dialogue, right? You will not, you will find very less people who are, themselves are saying, you know, you can have an open dialogue with me. Any feedback you want me to give based on my performance? Very good question. Uh, someone random, I don't know who you are, but uh, this is a very good question. Appraisal hota hai. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why will there not be any appraisal? What is the mental peace scenario in this organization? Mm. Good. We can reframe it, Smriti. This will backfire in this manner, but of course we can reframe it. Some of it is also how you are framing these questions. The intention behind this is not wrong. Okay. None of these questions, I understand the intention behind those are not wrong, but it's a way... Um, the way in which you convey it will make most the most difference, right? Um, what are the important skills for this job? Good one. How is my interview feedback, please? Good one. 
how will how the company will treat me okay bikram ji i'm a little confused about this so treat me matlab party denge <laughs> no, i know i understand what you're saying but there is a better way to um frame it right so no one will tell you how they'll treat you until unless you don't get into the organization right they will say we will shower you with all uh, all affection all goodies all you know fun stuff for you to share on linkedin and once you're inside the job <laughs> no one will tell you uh, you know how your days will be please tell me about the things you found out that i should improve or work upon what qualities that you liked about me what are the company's add on add ons along with salary okay why should i join your company <laughs> sadveer again like <laughs> sadveer and akshita have some like uh, really really <laughs> really really amazing questions which may or may not backfire i can't really promise but yeah what makes your company better than your competitors okay again a question which is uh, a little controversial but not bad okay so let me uh, go ahead and you know um, answer these again as part of buckets so the questions that i really liked okay and that you that i think you can ask as they are without any filters are how do you manage your professional and personal life very nice okay um what has kept you motivated to keep working for so long in this company good question but just research if the interviewer has joined just now or it has been a while what is the work culture at your organization or company very nice um is there anything in my resume that concerns you ke bajaye is there anything in my resume that uh, you know that interests you i mean instead of putting it in negative light you can put it more in the positive light okay and feedback regarding performance very good questions whoever has asked about that um so smriti coming to your question what is a mental peace scenario in this organization you can reframe it and ask what is your organization doing to kind of uh, during this pandemic to uplift the motivation of employees in terms of the in terms of mental wellness okay you can call it mental wellness and you can put it that way so that you understand what are some of the initiatives that are taken by most of the organizations right uh if you don't have any questions at the moment to ask can you say no no questions yes you can say no no questions but ideally you should be ready at least with one question because that shows you are genuinely interested in the organization right anything anything while reading that you found interesting or about the interviewer that you found interesting you can ask those as well like you can say i have uh, looked you up on linkedin and i found that you have been in the space for a while how was how has been your experience of working here for uh, the last 2 3 months or the last 2 3 years right does the company have a remote work policy yes you can definitely ask that what is the work culture your organization follows yes uh what are the company's add ons along with the salary yes you can definitely ask that uh please tell me about the things you found out that i should improve or work upon yes you should definitely ask that what made you prioritize me among others a uh, good question but you may reframe it in this way saying i am sure you have interviewed a lot of candidates what what is that one thing that you think that um you know i have which is unique to me amongst all the others that you have interviewed some of it also depends on how you are asking the question right whether it's a defensive tone it's an offensive tone whether it's a neutral tone whether it's a tone wherein you are actually interested to know right what do other skills okay skills that i should work upon or skills that i already have good questions right uplift lol okay vikram i think i'm okay was it oh my my comment is it okay can we also ask whether the interview turned out to be a yes uh you can ask but in all likelihood the answer that you'll get it is we'll discuss about it and we'll get back to you right because no one makes up their mind right there on the spot even after you have given the interviews all the previous interview results and the current interview results are to be collated to understand whether you will be making the final cut or not right it's never one person's call it is a, a what do you call it it's a culmination or it's a, an addition of all the uh, interview results that you might have got from the other interviews right so which is why um, even if you ask a yes i mean even if you ask this question that is it a yes for me in all likelihood that's the answer that you're going to get 
because they have to tally the results okay uh going to mr karma once again he has another interesting question okay and just two more questions and then we'll be done with the session okay and since i'm answering the questions right here and here and this is the q and a as well right so <clears throat> mr karma is going to come back mr karma yes yes my lovely students so the other question that i have for you is um what do you do when you don't get feedback on your candidature so imagine you have given this amazing interview in this amazing company that you want to work for and the salary is just mind blowing it is enough to put you on a rocket and take you out of earth so what happens when you don't hear back from the recruiter right uh, what do you do when you don't get the feedback on your candidature it is all the interviews will be like three idiots on no, <laughs> no. i'm just doing some personification so that you you guys don't feel that this is going to be a boring session we have to enjoy it together right like i said you have to enjoy an interview so this is pretty much how i'm trying to make you feel because this is how i enjoy my interviews and towards the end of the session i'll also tell you some of the good companies from which i have been rejected based on my interviews okay cry <laughs> how will the recruiter even remember us because he'll interview many and won't even decide if we are recruited on the spot no it doesn't mean the recruiter won't remember you kumar the recruiter will remember you and especially if you are someone who has been liked by all the i mean everybody present in the panel you will be there on the top of the list right uh, with that being said if mm, i mean if in the end it's not really positive in that case of course recruiters take more time to come back to you okay so essentially how the system works is um they would keep 10 people okay so for instance they are hiring for 10 roles or uh, 10 positions for a particular role right like software engineer they'll take 10 people okay they'll say they'll offer to them there are chances maybe two or three of out of them might reject right because they might go to other organizations or whatever it is those three will again be offered to the next set of three candidates that they've shortlisted okay only once the whole process is over will they trigger the rejections for others the other case in which rejections can be triggered is if you are not meeting the criteria at all like i have been rejected umpteen number of times by microsoft okay umpteen i mean i can't even tell you how many times i have been rejected okay now to i just uh, apply because i'm just interested you know i just keep applying but umpteen number of times because my skill set is not a match right so those are cases in which they'll trigger instant rejection when they know that there is no point even going ahead right but in case of freshers the rejections always come towards the end they'll never come on the spot until unless you are really really i mean the process is such that they give out rejections at the beginning or you are really really not that great a candidate okay follow up via email to recruiter good ones are there yes mail them write to hr and ask them politely okay get frustrated how <laughs> oh, that's such a human emotion really really appreciate the honest answer vikram jeet i get frustrated too so it's totally all right for you to get frustrated as long as you're not taking out that frustration in the form of a mail or a call or any hasty decisions please do not make hasty decisions when you're frustrated when you're angry uh a bridge that you burn will chase you after many years right so before you decide to burn a bridge you have to be sure that you want to burn it for sure and you're comfortable with the outcome of that okay will buy mail service with tracking facility that's a very cool one i mean i should also try it i guess <laughs> please apna time i guy in background <laughs> what should be perfect dress up for an interview in your opinion i think um, given the fact that nowadays everything is virtual if you know what the uh, i mean dressing style that is followed in the organization like if it's a very very um formal company then probably wearing formals would make more sense but if you are interviewing with these new age startups which don't emphasize much on you know uh, which don't emphasize on a proper dress code i think you you can wear t-shirt jeans or whichever others that you feel comfortable in right 
I will write pro and cons that made me rejected. Then get back to the starting point and start preparing more. Very, very, very powerful and very nice, Ayurveda. Very nice. Yes, yes. That's what is needed for you. If you're and especially if you're someone who's getting rejected in like a continuous streak, like uh, for instance, you were sitting for ten interviews out of which you continuously got rejected for seven interviews. It's high time you sit and analyze why are you getting rejected in these interviews. Okay, because if you're getting selected basis your resume, that means it's not the resume that needs work, but it's actually you who needs to work, right? So you'll have to analyze what is. Even when you're interviewing with someone, you will know what the deal breakers were, right? Where you may have probably messed up. What are some of the answers that you gave to which you know that the recruiter either was not very impressed or the recruiter cut you short or you were beating around the bush too much, right? So. You'll have to sit and analyze if you're facing continuous streak of rejections, because if you're not analyzing where you're going wrong, you will not go right after that point. Okay, get showers on with sad song in the background now. Good one. I like it. <laughs> Till when we should wait for rejection or selection call? See, ideally, I think after your process is over, uh, I think two weeks is a good time to wait because usually companies take that much of time. But I think one week is enough. Anything before that is more like, oh, please, can you hurry up? Can you hurry up? That in no way will hurry up the recruiter. The recruiter is going to take his or her own sweet time. The recruiter will then stop responding to you. So ideally, you should wait for at least a week before you actually reach out to the recruiter and say, hey, I interviewed with you on this day at this time. And uh, this is pretty much what my interview was. Give a short summary, maybe consisting of three, four sentences. And you can also say if there was something that stood out in the interview or the recruiter complimented you for that or specifically called out on in your resume, please mention that as well. And say, it's been a week. I've been wanting to hear from you. What are your thoughts about my candidature? And how long should um, I wait before I follow up with you again? Give the power to the recruiter. The recruiter might say, hey, this process might. Some will reply, some will not reply. But for those who reply and who genuinely want to reply back, they will say that, hey, you know what, this process is going to take some time. You either forget about it for the time being, and if you have other jobs, go ahead for that. Or you may have to wait for another two weeks because our leadership team is taking some time to figure out you know, uh, if they want to hire someone from this role out of your college or wherever. Right. So when you're writing back, I think ideally you should take one week after your process is over, give a summary, give something that stood out in the interview. And towards the end, ask when is it that you should be following up. And you say, if the person responds back in a positive note saying that you can follow up with me after two weeks, you can actually go ahead and ask that, can I set up a calendar reminder, right? Or can I give you a call or something of that sort, right? In the next email. And you should end it just there, OK? Since you mentioned resume, what you as a recruiter look first in the resume. See, Smriti, for freshers, um, I honestly don't think it matters really too much. A lot of emphasis, and since our platform, which is Apply.ai, we deal with hiring freshers, uh, a lot of things that I get to hear from clients or I notice when the clients post the job is to do with either um, from where you are graduating, Okay, the location constraints, given the fact that the pandemic has changed a lot of dynamics, uh, the location constraint. Another part is if you have previous experience in, um, say, in, a, in another project or a live project or, a, or an internship with respect to what is being asked in the job description. So if you are someone who has already done, for instance, we got someone in the space of influencer marketing get we got her hired in an organization which was into the field of influencer marketing. And the reason they chose her profile is because she was already doing her internship in that space. Right. So a lot of it also depends on how much of current experience you already have. Right. Make your feedback constructive and clear. Yes. The best places to hunt for jobs. OK, I will come back to that. Startups versus MNC as a fresher. Which one should I choose? Uh, your wish, Vikram. Ideally, always. I wouldn't ever say that you shouldn't do this or you should do that. 
okay because everybody has got a different career path it's up to them to choose which path is right for them if you choose an mnc you get a good brand and later on if you want to switch or whatever life becomes easier if you're choosing a startup you're choosing a lot of learning because in mncs at entry levels you might not really get to learn so much as you can get to learn in a startup wherein you have to take things head on and you have to keep experimenting to see if you're you know starting if you're actually succeeding or failing right and there's always the money that comes into consideration which i don't know at any levels how much does it matter but it's your choice in the end if you want to have good brand names on your resume and you know later on if you switch if you want that switch to be easier then mncs uh, i'm not saying people don't from startups don't get um, to switch um, as easily as mncs of course they also get to switch but it depends on which type of startups are you joining but the learning curve because i have worked in mncs i worked in mid sized organizations and now working with a startup with an early stage startup my learning here is like much 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 more than so much that i've learned uh in the other organizations okay so it's your own choice can i decide that i'm not selected if i didn't get any mail and others from our college got selection mails in all likelihood yes okay because some most of the companies don't send rejection emails but with that being said the other thing can also be that they have currently not decided to roll out the rejection mails because they are they've kept you as a buffer person right like how you keep colleges abhi if i don't get top tier one college i will keep one college and buffer i might end up getting into that the same way uh, recruiters might keep candidates on buffer but in all likelihood if others got selection emails and you didn't uh, you can consider it as a rejection uh, kumar what will you choose freelancing or getting into an mnc <laughs> vikram ji again like i said it's the same thing as startups and mnc it's your choice okay however at a starting stage if you get some mnc exposure especially if you are planning to switch to freelancing i think it would be better because you will get some idea of how processes work how structure works um the reason of working with mncs is because you will see how structures work how politics work how uh, engaging with different um stakeholders work right that's far more important in mncs so once you get an idea you will get more clarity in terms of your thinking and you can think start thinking more strategically okay so i would say if i were in your place i would first go for an mnc and after that maybe work there for whatever time i feel like and then if after that i want to pursue freelancing or i would like to do that okay however in case of startups and mncs i would say it is your personal choice because uh you have to choose whether learning for you is more because you are representing an organization right learning steep curve whether you would prefer that or you would prefer structure and processes okay so best places to hunt for jobs of course i would like to invite you to our platform for sure <laughs> which is applied at air but then apart from that uh, couple of other places wherein you can also hunt for jobs are spe specifically tech jobs are hirest.com and you have of course nokri you have linkedin i think most of the people nowadays have conversations on linkedin and get hired through linkedin itself i myself have landed two jobs through linkedin itself right um my job at bridge to analytics solutions and this current job that i'm doing is all through my conversations on linkedin so i've landed my jobs through linkedin as well and yes you have cut short you have insta hire you have angel list there is there are just endless number of platforms on which you can choose to be but it depends on um uh, what are you specifically targeting right so if you want to be angel list is usually for startups so if you are someone who's not really interested in getting into startups choose the other platforms right um if you are someone who's super interested to get in startups angelist is where you should have uh, an account for sure okay i hope that answers your questions and of course apart from that i will talk about my uh, platform for sure apli apply.ai you can be on that as well and you can land jobs at startups and mncs everything combined <laughs> maximum people got get rejected in aptitude tests only so what will you suggest on this purpose uh yes i mean that's the reason these uh, <laughs> tests are given right i mean they are to check your aptitude uh, how how much 
um, excellent a candidate are you basis the aptitude test that you are given uh, giving so most of these tests are given as rejection mediums like elimination mediums right so there would be a certain cut off that would be set and if you're not crossing that the companies might end up rejecting you because if like you are uh, you know sitting and giving the aptitude test same like you there might be thousands of other students so uh, the recruiters can't sit and go through thousands of resumes right uh, otherwise the real talent i mean just if i were to look at someone basis their resume i'm not really giving them a fair chance to express themselves which is why aptitude test is another way to figure out how can uh, the best candidates be absorbed into the system all right uh, so cool guys i think for me i have reached almost the end of the show there is one last in fact two last questions that uh, mr karma has okay so i'm going to get mr karma back really soon hello guys hi hi everyone so two questions for you what's the one thing that you liked about this session and if you learned something new how would you like to thank me did you get my questions what's the one thing that you liked about this session if you learned something new how would you like to thank me thank you thank you mr karma i think i loved your session <laughs> i don't know about the audience but yeah what's the one thing that you liked about the session and if you learned something new how would you like to thank mr karma okay so any any last set of answers it's uh, 12:33 by my clock Mr Karma okay thank you thank you Kushal I'll pass on the compliment to him the acceptance of silly or fun answers is what I loved okay that every question was answered thank you so much uh, if there are any questions that I may have left um, you know unanswered please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and ask me I usually respond within 2 days uh, I usually try and respond at the moment but sometimes my the responses might get delayed depending on how complex of a question have you asked me so uh, probably within 2 days is when i respond back if i don't respond back within 2 days you can always uh, ask me hey can my question be answered okay i have learned a lot from the session and many myths got cleared mr karma okay <laughs> uh, the way you express ideas i liked it too much and i learned a lot about interview starters okay like the session multi role query quite interactive session thanks to mr karma karma op okay oh, uh, what is karma op i mean is it like a lingo that i should be searching <laughs> format of qna session was really good the way you interacted good vibes okay mr karma then so much fun thanks a lot mr karma and his if an interviewer is like mr karma people will enjoy the interview and have less fear of the results during interviews <laughs> thank you mr karma mr karma rocking <laughs> all right overpowered okay all right okay so i guess um i mean i see adulations coming in for mr karma i think uh, the thing i like mr karma and how would i thank you keeping your said words in mind while going for future interviews and also linkedin post thank you so much and if any one of you feels that i'm a good hr please go ahead and endorse me for my hr skills as well <laughs> i mean it's just a nas but yeah i think for me personally the win would be if you guys actually take some learnings from here and you're able to crack the interviews that would be the biggest learning for me oh yeah and by the way coming since i said i had talked about two things one was about you know if you don't clear it like if you're getting rejected okay um so couple of points i'll quickly take like another 2 minutes to explain that to you so couple of uh, points before you get rejections or if you are in that waiting period so it says send a thank you note to your interviewer share additional information like work samples don't act too needy distract yourself with activities hobbies research about the job and the organization set minimum salary requirements prepare yourself for the negative news this is the most important part that you have to be prepared for negative news okay you cannot always expect that you will be accepted even if the interview went great okay which is why it's important 
that you have to be prepared for negative news. And the last point would be ask your hiring manager for a timeline. Like I said, I'm going to put it in the chat. I put it in the personal chat so that it can be shared by the team with the others. This is the article that I was just reading out from. And I think it's really, really helpful for you guys to also know um, what to do when you are in the waiting period, in that period of, you know, uh, endless probabilities coming your way and waiting for a rejection or probably trying to see how things will go, right? So which is why it's very, very important that you prepare yourself for everything of that sort. And some of the interviews in which I have personally been rejected and I would have loved to make it through them are um, cred, okay? Um, I think there was uh, Accenture as well at some point of time. So cred, Accenture, uh, I've been rejected in uh, Aether Energy. I'm just recollecting, I mean, the kind of interviews that I've given over the past five years, I've been rejected in Unilever. Okay, so these are the four companies that I vividly remember wherein I thought I almost made it, but I got rejected. And these were the organizations that I did really like to work with at some point of time. So there you go, CRED, uh, Unilever, Accenture, Aether Energy. All right, so those are my set of rejections. And uh, yeah, I mean, life goes on and you still keep learning, still keep picking up new skills. All right, guys, that's the message that I want to leave you with, that you are great, you are amazing the way you are. And one rejection doesn't define you. It doesn't mean you have to get angry about it or bitter about it. You know what? I'm going to show them that I can get a better job offer and all that. It's not, you're not doing it for anyone else. You getting a better job offer will actually benefit you. It has got nothing to do with the organization which rejected you right so be happy with what you have be happy in yourself keep working when i say happy i don't mean that you should not keep learning you have to keep learning you have to keep bettering yourself but you have to be happy where you are with who you are right because all of you are unique all of us are unique and all of us are different but yet all of us are similar and that's why that's where the beauty of uh, us human beings comes in picture all right, that's the last message that I want to leave you all with uh, because otherwise I'll go into the philosophical mode. And thank you so much for being such a lovely audience answering all my questions, answering all the questions of Mr. Karma. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Girl Script team, for inviting me. This was an amazing session, and I hope I didn't eat up too much of your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dipti ma'am. It was really an amazing, fun and interactive session. At least I have ever like attended and it was really like um, at 12, I was pinging my teammates that it's time, but I really don't want her to interrupt and want her to say that it's time to wrap up. But it was really great session and will really like you to have in future as well and i hope the audience enjoyed as well and the for you guys uh, do connect with dipti ma'am we have already shared uh, her linkedin id as well and uh, she is a like a great uh, uh, speaker and you can uh, as you have uh, already enjoyed her session so go ahead and connect with her have a talk with her clear all your doubts in future as well and yeah, thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, accepting our invite. And we really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Yeah, same to you, ma'am. Yeah, bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.